About 20 years ago, we developed a new technique of giving radiation to patients with breast cancer. With this target IORT technique, patients with lumpectomy can receive their radiotherapy during the lumpectomy procedure. Normally, patients when they have a lumpectomy need to have radiotherapy for three to six weeks every day after the operation. For this, they have to go to the radiotherapy center in the hospital every working day. With the target IORT technique, this can all be done during the operation. In the target A trial, we randomly allocated 3,500 women to receive either target IORT during the operation or whole breast radiotherapy afterwards over three to six weeks. This is a unique study. It is the first to quantify the environmental impact of our patients travelling to receive radiotherapy. It was brought about through the collaboration of breast cancer specialists here at Swindon's Great Western Hospital in London, in Harlow and through the hard work of two sick form students. After breast cancer surgery I have to tell my patients that they need to go to Oxford or Bath every day for three or four weeks to receive their radiotherapy. I realised that while I'd be driving this only once or twice a month, most of my patients would be asked to drive this at least three or four weeks um, for their radiotherapy. What a horrible journey I thought they had to put up with. In the Target A trial, we found that patients with breast cancer who have a lumpectomy and targeted intraoperative radiotherapy during their lumpectomy procedure fare no worse than those who need to take the radiotherapy postoperatively for over six weeks. In this paper, we crunched the numbers. There are only 62 radiotherapy centres in the UK, which means that most patients with breast cancer have to travel a long way to complete their breast cancer treatment. That includes those in district general hospitals, such as Harlow and Swindon. In this study, we looked carefully at patients treated in the UK as part of the Target A trial. They were treated at University College London and the Royal Free, at Dundee, Winchester and Guy's Hospital. We also looked at patients treated in Swindon and Harlow. Both of these hospitals have recently acquired the intraoptive radiotherapy device and we looked at the number of miles that were saved by patients having their treatment in these hospitals. Using patients' postcodes and the addresses of radiotherapy centres participating in the trial, we calculated the distance driven and journey times taken. We used Google Maps to work this out, and we validated our results by doing several index journeys to and from the radiotherapy centre. Well, we found that most patients, a typical breast cancer patient, would have to travel 753 miles over 30 hours, and that means that they would release 215 kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions. And this doesn't take into account how much trouble the patient and the family have to undergo in order to take this radiation. If intraoptive radiotherapy were available in the UK, we estimate that up to 20,000 patients per year would be suitable for this treatment. This equates to a reduction in miles travelled for radiotherapy in regional centres of between 6 million and 15 million miles, and a corresponding reduction in carbon dioxide emissions of between 1,700 tonnes and 4,300 tonnes each year. In order to absorb the carbon dioxide, it would require a forest up to 300 hectares. This forest would need to cover St James's Park, Hyde Park, Kensington Palace Gardens, Buckingham Palace Gardens and Green Park combined. By using new techniques such as intraoptive radiotherapy, we could actually reduce our patient's carbon footprint. Perhaps the concept of therapy miles needs to be considered when we prescribe treatments for our patients. These savings are also important in addition to saving to the NHS in terms of delivering the treatment. Standing here in the beautiful French Alps reminds me, it reminds us all just how important the environment is. The so-called target treatment, which is a form of intraoperative radiotherapy, which we believe we have shown is just as effective for a selected group, quite a large group, and of course the advantages to the patient are very, very considerable. The new piece of work breaks new ground on the environmental front.